You're listening to Safer Travel Talk, the podcast to inform, inspire, and provide insight into the world of travel. In this episode of the podcast, I caught up with a study abroad student to discuss her overall experience and offer advice for anyone thinking of applying for this kind of opportunity. Hi Anna, thanks so much for coming on and joining us on this uh, Safer Travel Talk podcast. Um, so okay, today, we... thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. So, what time is it over there? Uh, right now, it is three o'clock p.m. Three in the afternoon. It's um, just gone eleven p.m. here, so it's a bit more casual. Oh. I'm in my living room at home, normally in the office, um, but I thought I'd just jump on because it'd be great to chat um, and catch up from where we sort of left off about six months ago. Now, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience. You, you're a Pacific University student uh, from Oregon, if no one knows, um, and you've come across to York St. John to do a study abroad program for one semester. So that's quite interesting, I thought, because I've kind of done the reverse of that. <clears throat> As a York St. John student, I came across to Portland, Oregon. So we've both got kind of opposite views on this. So I thought it'd be interesting to right. hear yours. So overall, what, what did you kind of think of the experience? Um, it was a, it was a fabulous experience. Honestly, I can say that I miss um, being at York St. John. It was um, a great time. So I traveled um, for one semester, like you mentioned, and I went during the fall. So I was there to experience England during the colder weather. Um, and so it just reminded me of home. It essentially it rained all the time. It was cold. Um, <laughs> but it was beautiful. It was beautiful to um, explore the city. It's definitely smaller. Then Portland, which is where I'm from, Portland, Oregon, which is a big metropolitan city. Um, and yeah, so I was there I was, um, studying, um, or I was part of this uh, school of sport there. So I'm a kinesiology, kinesiology major here. Um, so I took two classes. I also took a history class um, just as a requirement for my core here at Pacific. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great time. I enjoyed it. It was so interesting <laughs> to be able to legally drink in England and not be able to <laughs> legally drink in the US because when I was there I was only 20 so yeah it was it was interesting yeah big bonus of it <laughs> yeah. um and it, actually the nightlife and social life is very different I thought in the UK as, as opposed to across there um Absolutely. you guys tend to have a lot of house parties and you kind of like go down the road to those there's no clubs as such and you know you can't get into the bars so how do you th- find the difference over here that kind of thing did you have a nice social group or like what what was it like oh well yeah the nightlife is different um so pacific university is located in a small college town like it's a small um, town called forest grove i guess it's a city actually but it's small so we don't really have bars we don't really have clubs um you know we don't really have pubs i mean there is one just down the street but it's you know not not something that is common here like mm. you mentioned we do have a lot of house parties um but the unfortunate part is not like those like Hollywood ones where, you know, there's like thousands or hundreds of students in a house and everybody's drinking um, because being in a small city like Forest Grove, um, chances are you have um, neighbors who aren't college students that will definitely call the police on you. Um, yeah. But yeah, being in England or being at York and just getting to experience what it's like to go to a club or to go to a pub and have a pint with you know new new freshies or um or freshers and so it was it was a very interesting experience I think that's something again I was not able to experience in the U.S. at all and so yeah it was just fun I I enjoyed it a lot it's such a different experience to you know be able to meet new people and to have a lot of fun doing it because you know not all um, bonding activities where you meet um, people within your graduating graduating class mm. it's not always fun you know it's always just a hey you know what's your favorite color let's you know, study gotta, hey oh, what's yeah. your favorite drink <laughs> yeah you know so. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely I've definitely got memories of being at house parties across there and the police would turn up and I would yeah. freak out I didn't know what to do is it, and it was for me it's sort of like like the films that I'd seen it was kind of like <clears throat> like that experience um 
but I think yeah, York's a little bit more low, low key in a sense. Um, obviously, we're gonna drink, but there's like l- loads of pubs to get around, and it's like um, mm-hmm. it's just a nice, nice city. I thought it's very pedestrianized as well. Yeah, it's um, very different from here. A lot of people drive, so yeah, and so that's a cab. Yeah, that's another thing though as well, because obviously in the US, you're living on campus there, aren't you? Like right in walking distance from the university. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, well, just on the front doorstep, really. But in York, you're kind of not on the campus, so it's not as not as communal in a sense. Maybe. How did you right, find no. uh, find that? What do you think? Um, actually, yeah, um, it was interesting. So while I was at York, I did stay at one of the accommodations, and it's very different from the U.S. in the sense where at Pacific, you're literally on campus your accommodation is on campus. So if you do go to class, you can literally wake up five minutes before class, get out of bed and just walk to class. Mm. Versus um, in York, it was still, like you mentioned, it's still a bit of a ways away. So I actually had to walk um, like 15 minutes just to get onto campus and then go to class. So it is different. And I think, I don't know if I liked one or the other more. I think um, just being used to having to go to class is just, that was just it. I think my biggest shock was more like how classes were run yeah. in England versus the US. I think that was a bigger like shock to me. In what sense do you think? What the amount of hours that you put in to each class kind of thing or kind of just the structure. So here in the US, right, let's say I am taking a um, biomechanics course. Mm. Right. So typically it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you have a lecture that's about an hour and five minutes but you have it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you have a lab, like a three hour lab on let's say a Tuesday. But in York, you have it, you have just one lecture for that course. And then you have one like lab for that course. And like, that's it. It's not a repetitive (laughs) course, like, you know, class throughout the week. And that was probably the biggest like shock to me. Cause like I had two days of no classes in England. And that was like, and just even having my afternoon free in the U S is just, a lucky thing so it's yeah. just a big shock I was just like wow yeah I think being used to that culture and then going across to the American way of doing things it was it was a bit of a push in the right direction I thought because I was a bit lazy in New York really first year and then coming across to study in Portland um it kind of uh it, it shocked me a bit and, and we got marked on attendance and put on our hands up in class and interaction um, none of this sort of stuff had been pushed previously and it was actually a really good thing because I think it made me a bit more of a an engaged student to you know um, and and the early lectures to even having to be in the classroom for 7 a.m that was I mean mind-blowing <laughs> yeah and I guess it depends on perspective as well because here in the U.S. Um, I I feel like a lot of college students feel um overworked by their assignments because like in England I only had one assignment and that was usually whatever the the final assignment is to get your mark Mm. um and yeah so I felt like I had a very balanced life in England where I was like wow I have time for my academics I had time for my social life I had time to you know do any like chores that I need to do in my own house (laughs) or whatever um Mm. yeah but in 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 the U.S. I feel like you know, just having time to make dinner is hard. That's why, you know, mm. we love to meal prep here. We're always just like, oh, on, one, on Sunday, we just got to meal prep seven meals yeah. and then do it again. So, mm. Do you feel like you're a little bit less stressed in the UK then? Is that kind of what you're saying? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I had a grand time. I was, it was amazing. I was like, wow, is this what it's like to, to not be overworked by, you know, the university? But. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that that switching cultures. Um, was there any other culture shock that you noticed, maybe outside of university life? Oh yeah, just again with the social life. I remember I first arrived to England, and somebody was like, "Hi, are you all right?" And I'm like, "I don't know, am I?" <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. And it's just like knowing that instead of like here, we always say, "How are you?" and you, and then you know, you guys say, "Are you all right?" I'm just like do I not look okay? Do I not yeah, look all yeah. right? You know? So that was the first like <laughs> shock that I had. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, and the, the yeah. accents as well. I mean, if you land in London and you come up to York, it's a totally different accent. And yeah. I mean, that'll probably shock a few people, but um, it tends to change every every couple of miles in England, really. The accents, it's crazy. Yeah, I have. <laughs> um, yes, I landed in Manchester and then I um, joined the, or I got picked up by York St. John and we went back to York. Um, yeah, and just knowing that all the students there also have different language, I mean, different accents. Um, yeah. So it was always interesting to just hear the different dialects. And I'm just like, wow, like, even then it seems so diverse. So. Yeah. So when you came across, did, um, did the study abroad department kind of do a fair bit for you in terms of the prepping and the safety aspect of stuff? Or did you have to do much of that thinking and prepping by yourself? In terms of safety and um, prepping to just study abroad, it was like both um, the study abroad office at Pacific helping me, like he has a checklist of what you should have and just to make sure that, you know, there's no delays on your flight to and from York. Um, and also just, you know, giving us contacts of who to talk to in case we are lost or to contact when we aren't sure about what our like modules are um so yeah it was it was always it, I always felt safe I um you know traveling I think this is my first major trip traveling by myself I don't think I've ever flown anywhere by myself before so to fly out of the country to England was a bit scary but you know knowing that your St. John um had like a group of um students there to pick us up and you know giving us contact information and knowing mm. that there were going to be other students um there as well to um that are studying abroad so it's not it was not I never felt alone if that made sense um, mm. so yeah it was it was pretty smooth process because from that point on you know arriving on campus at your St. John um we got a list um a schedule of what um our day is going to look like and for the next week in terms of orientation mm. yeah um, you know, so yeah, it was, it was pretty straightforward and pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> That's good. Is there anything you kind of wish you'd done before um, that you maybe hadn't done? I know for me personally, when I went across, I packed far too many clothes um, that I just never wore, never wore. So how, how about yourself? Actually, I feel like I wish I, I wish I bought more souvenirs. I think <laughs> that was for me. So I, I brought the right amount of clothes. I said I wore, I, I was very careful because I know I overpack a lot. So I was like, okay, I have to be sure that everything I bring is something I will actually utilize. And mm. also I need to make sure that I like have space for things I want to bring home because I, I'm not a big souvenir person, right? But like, for example, I love the York City. Like I wish I bought <laughs> myself at least a few more boxes to bring home. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, that was something I wish I did. And I wish I explored England more. I think because mm. I was so caught up in like making sure that I was doing well in uni, but also like, you know, not overspending. I didn't go and experience um, much of England as much as I wanted to. Like I've obviously been to Manchester because I've flown in there and I stopped in London once and that was just for, um, to travel out of England because I yeah. went to France but oh, yeah nice. I wish I just I, I just wish I like explored more of England that was one thing that I wish I did so do you think you'll be back then to take a few more of those places absolutely. off absolutely <laughs> absolutely I would love to come back I'd love to come back and see York as well and experience it more um as a visitor or as a tourist versus like mm. you know a student there um because I would have more time to just explore the places I didn't go to and in nicer weather I love to go back with me in the spring and summer yeah yeah definitely um are there any sort of more benefits to the study abroad uh, experience uh, that you think you should mention for anyone who's thinking about doing a similar experience yeah so I think it's a great opportunity to learn about a different culture of course it's scary I think this again it was the first time I've ever flown um, anywhere by myself but also was by myself um, mm. so it was a bit of a wonderful learning experience for me to understand my strengths and weaknesses when it comes to being an independent person 
Um, because obviously in England, I didn't have family there. I didn't really have friends there. I was worried a lot about my um, interpersonal skills. I was like, can I even make friends? How do I, you know, connect with somebody I don't even know? And especially someone from a different culture, mm. um, you know, what, what ex- or expectations or, you know, um, like perceptions do people have of me as an American, you know, because obviously... Um, America is always an interesting country. People yeah. always have opinions about it. <laughs> but, you know, so it was it was definitely a wonderful experience of, like, learning to find yourself or at least learn more about yourself. I think that's always great mm. in terms of personal accomplishments. And then uh, academic life, it's, like, it's exciting and it's very, very beneficial to learn um, different, like, I guess, education systems. Um, and for mm. me, learning what um, how I learn best um, and I learned that although I really enjoyed England's um, system where it's like, you know, you have like one class um, and one lab for every module. Um, but I know that so much freedom for me, I get get pretty lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I enjoy, all, I guess. In a, balance, isn't it? Ahead. Yeah, that is you know, yeah, I mean, kind definitely. of a balance. I do, I do want, you know, a little bit more structure in a sense like you know more deadlines for me to mm. continue working but not enough to where I feel like I don't have that um balance of like a social life and an academic life mm. um but yeah there's so many benefits to studying abroad I would definitely recommend it and again even just traveling getting to travel and see a different place um because it's again it's not always an opportunity that everybody has and so to kind of like capitalize on that and just take advantage of that is is a great thing to do <laughs> did you sort of come home with a buzz and tell all your friends about the experience uh, or that kind of thing absolutely I think everybody was kind of waiting to, um, for me to come back to see if I picked up an English accent of course <laughs> I did not um, but that was that was pretty funny to um, to hear everybody be like oh you didn't pick up an English accent um, but yeah it was it was so great I just wanted I definitely want I came back and I wanted to tell everybody about it and mm. just, encourage anybody that was like on the fence about it i'm like you just gotta do it um, yeah that's you know, it finances yeah. yeah finances are definitely a, a big factor in wanting to go or not but i think there's so much um positives and benefits to it that like you know finances you know can can be dealt with can be figured out so mm. yeah it's a really great experience i think i definitely kind of like change as a person through doing this experience um like yeah. i said previously um and also got so many friends from around the world now um and especially sort of hawaii in the west coast um which mm-hmm. is, i never thought i would have hawaiian friends and it's it's yeah. um it's just nice you know and it, we still keep you in contact and that kind of thing um and i came back my head screwed on a bit and went into third year you know so it's 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 a great experience i always encourage people to do these kind of things um definitely definitely um did you did you kind of experience any reverse culture shock so when you came back into reality what did it kind of feel like did it feel a different to before you went or were you a changed person um i quite honestly i didn't experience much of a reverse culture shock i think it's because um I felt like I didn't really go anywhere that was too different from the U.S. Of course, mm. like culturally, there's a lot of different nuances. Yeah. Um, so, like, I guess when I came back, I stopped saying, like, my apartment. I would always say, yeah, like, come visit me at my flat or come visit me at my flatmate. <laughs> so I, like, yeah. picked up, like, little um, different um, words they're playing. Um, but it was also strange, like, like you mentioned, um, York is very, like, pedestrian oriented so I walked Mm. a lot so coming back to the U.S. um, I haven't driven a car in like three months so I'm like can I still drive is this something (laughs) that I can still do Um, so I was a bit hesitant on that but I'm glad that I can still drive a car Um, and yeah and and because I walked so much like I wouldn't mind walking anymore Usually before before I went to study abroad, I was like, "Ooh, that's a bit far. I'd rather just drive there, even though it's like not too long, too far of a walk." Yeah. Now it's like maybe like a mile away, and I'm like, "Oh, that's nothing. I walked so much in York. I'm like, that's fine. Let's just walk there and walk back." Um, yeah, that's so a good thing. Is, that's, yeah. Yeah, really good. 
I had to notice that everyone drives everywhere to the corner shop. You know, it's uh, <laughs> people just love their cars, and that's it's just a cultural yeah. thing, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. It sounds like the study abroad experience was really beneficial for you, and you brought um, a few of the things that you you learn out here back home and integrated that into your, your personal life, and that's what it's all about, Absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. How did your friends? Absolutely. How did your friends um, think about the experience? Do you do you still kind of like? talk about it now in groups and reminisce on moments absolutely so um i still have a group chat with three other of my friends that um, studied abroad two of them were also from pacific university and one of them was a friend that we met um in england but he lives in the east coast so it was um great so yeah we we still talk about it every time you know a new memory pops up um, we share it within the group. We share yeah. inside jokes still. We talk about it. We, um, you know, sometimes still um, FaceTime each other and um, our other friends that we made in England. Um, so, yeah, it's great. <laughs> like, it's it's something that even though it seems like a period of time where you can't, like, you always reminisce on it. But it, it, the beautiful thing is, like, these friendships, they, they grow with you. Mm, and so, yeah. I mean, hopefully that in the future we can go back together and then make new memories in the present and then, yeah. um, you know, carry it on. But yeah, I, it's, it's been great. Just, just thinking about it and just talking about it and just reminiscing on it. It's, it's great. It definitely makes me appreciate the opportunity of getting to study abroad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's great. Oh, it's amazing. Well, it's really nice to hear your story and your experience and catch up again after however many months it's been. Um, <laughs> Yeah. For anyone who's listening who would like to go on an experience like study abroad, uh, what other things might might you say to them, tips wise or or anything like that? Yeah. So studying abroad is great. I think that if you're on the fence about it, you should definitely do it. Um, some tips I have is one, it's it's so much better to over budget than under budget. Um, mm. You know, over budget in terms of like maybe the things that you aren't sure you want to do just budget for that anyway because it's so much easier to have money left over to do more things and have not enough money and I think that's where I kind of messed up because I kind of under budget and that's why I feel like I couldn't experience as much of England as I wanted to um another tip is you know don't be afraid to travel alone um I would say that York is relatively safe and I'm pretty sure the rest of England is Mm. um but yeah, I think that, you know, don't be afraid to go out on your own and explore places. Um, because I noticed that if you kind of wait for other people, chances are you might not get the opportunity opportunity to go. Mm. Um, but if, you know, you're worried, definitely find a buddy and go travel together. But definitely do it. Like, definitely schedule um, and list out all the places you want to go and do it. Um, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Because, you know, if you want to embrace like being very social and you want to embrace you know um, a new culture just like dive head in first you know Mm -hmm. don't dip your toe in the water just go for it because chances are you'll come out and have new friends experience new things and you know if you embarrass yourself it's okay you're only there for like three (laughs) months you can leave nobody will remember you (laughs) yeah but um and also another thing is join the club and um i did i played volleyball for York St. John and now I can say I was a college athlete <laughs> um, but yeah I definitely do that because it's it's a grand time and again you meet more people mm. and I didn't realize how much athletes drink <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's again another thing where you're just like you just learn more things every day yeah. and you have fun with it so it's, mm-hmm. yeah so that's really good messages there. I think um, definitely joining the socials and getting into those societies are a great way to meet new people in a, a new environment. Um, well, overall, it's been really great chatting to you and I'm glad you had a really nice experience in York. Um, thanks for joining us on our Safer Travel Talk podcast and hopefully we'll chat to you again in the future or bump into you again if you come by York. Um, so thanks for joining us. It's been really great. No, yeah. Thank you, Chris, for having me. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you soon. See you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Safer Travel Talk. To join us on this journey, make sure you follow the podcast on Spotify or subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. You can also follow us on social media and visit carolinesrainbowfoundation.org forward slash podcasts for more information. Thanks to Chris Healy for hosting and producing. As always, safe travels and we'll see you in the next episode.